Well, finally, I'm being able to get caught up on, on everybody else's type stuff. I've got like three or four saws I have to do, but they can hang for a little bit. You know, I've got to build up a warmer than usual 372, and I have to build up a warmer than usual 576. There's a few things I want to do this summer and, uh, that are not work-related, that are fun-related, and here's two of them right here. This is my Shelf Queen. It's a 2172 that was built back in the 2011 era. So it was in that era where they were having bearing issues, and they claimed it was how the bearings were seated in the cases and stuff like that, and some of them failed and some didn't. That one has not failed, okay? And this is a 375, which is what Husqvarna called the 372 XPW for a very, very short period of time. This one has a 375 sticker on the pull start. But what I want to do is bring this one back to life. And this is for me, for fun, not to be hopped up, just to be stock. Both of these just to be pretty much stock. I know everybody says you got to make them go faster, this, that, and the other thing. But at this point in my world, I've got plenty of saws and I've got plenty of fast saws. So what's more important to me is to have them run good and have them be nice and as close to stock as, as you know possible where I'm still interested in the saw. So I think what I want to do, and I'm not quite sure how many videos and how much time it's going to take is take this one here and then pop in my steel cage bearings, you know, put my money where my mouth is. Leave it all stock, so just basically break it right down, pop the bearings out, put different bearings back in, and then build it right back to where it was and just pretty much leave it alone. And then put it back on the shelf, but at least I know it's got good solid bearings and is not suspect. And the second thing is to build this one up. Pretty much in stock configuration. I don't think I'm going to change it much either. It may get um, the squish settled down to, you know, the 20,000s. And it might get a, a different muffler or a muffler mod, possibly a different ignition. But mainly, if the bearings are still good in this, it's going to get seals because usually that's what dies. You know, rubber parts for a fuel line, things like that, and then uh, build it back up to stock configuration. So these are for me. These are just for fun. This is my entertainment. So which one do I start with? This one here is dirtier, so it'll wait. I'll start with the clean one. Well, this is going to be take two. And I think what I want to do in this video is actually two things. One is to explore the differences between the John Thread line of saws, the 2166 and 2172 versus the Husqvarna X-Torque because that's a question that gets asked often. You know, why one versus the other or what truly is the difference? And the second thing I want to do is just sort of parade the tools that I'll use to break a saw down, change bearings and seals, and bring it back up again. And I thought that this was going to be like short and simple. Well, actually it's not. And so you're going to have to bear with me. And, and I'm not quite sure I've got the order in, um, in a way that's going to be interesting, but I'm going to give it a try. So forever being the optimist, I think the first thing I want to do is discuss what's the same between the Husqvarna 372 and 365 X Torx and the John Thread counterparts. So everything you see here in my hands, muffler, shield, cylinder, decomp, boot, clamp, carb, filter holder, um, even the bracket, that's the same between a Husqvarna 372 and a 2172 and conversely the Husqvarna 365 and the John Thread 2166. And the biggest difference between 
the 2172 and the 2166 is simply these transfer caps. Where on the 2172, they don't have that uh, divider in there. They have a little more cross-sectional area. And that's it. Everything else is the same. So between the Husqvarna line and the John's Fred line on the x torques everything there is the same. Okay? Pretty simple, right? Also, everything here is the same, except for the color. Same flywheel, piston, crank, caps. All the internal parts for the oil pump, clutch, chain brake, they're all interchangeable between that uh, series of John's threads and Husqvarna's. Even that little rubber bump is. Piston, everything, that's the same. Little tube for the impulse line, all the same. So that's easy, right? Let's see if I can set this out of the way. The tray. That's the same between 372 and 2172. Same as this here, the baffle. That's the same as well. Even got that goofy little top hat that goes on the chain brake handle like that. Always put the hat side or the rim of the hat toward the cases. Now we can start talking about the differences. Well, actually, a couple more things before we get into the differences. Um, just a short ditty on the ignitions. Of course, they're the same all the way through between the Husky and John Shred and also between the 372 and 365, 2166, 2172, all the same. But there's been a significant upgrade on these ignitions. The new ones have a slightly different timing curve and they also have more hot spark at a little bit lower RPM, so it's a lot easier to start the saw. So if you've got one of these old ones with a 2011 on it, you know, and that number right there, I'll just put it up to the camera. If it works and you're happy, that's fine. But if it's a little hard to start and the idle wanders a little bit, um, really consider upgrading to the new ignition system. It is better. And that's across all four models. Okay. Pop that. Filter. 372 has the tall filter, which also means it has the tall filter cover. Though John Threads, both the 2166 and 72 have got the short cover and filter like a Husqvarna 365. So this would be the same as a Husky 365 filter, 2166 and 2172 filter, right? This would be the 372 right here. Now let's get to the differences. The fundamental difference between the Husqvarna and the John Thread starts right here. And on the John Threads, they've always had the top angle here of the handle perpendicular to the axis of the saw, where the Husqvarna has always been a little bit offset. That's the biggest difference. Um, because of that difference in angle, obviously you have a different handle but you also have a different chain brake paddle. So you can't interchange these from the 2166, 2172 to the Husqvarna 365, 372. They won't interchange. And one of the reasons they don't interchange is the distance between the two mounting holes on the handle is different between the John's Fred line and the Husqvarna line. Let's start getting this stuff off the table. The John's Fred has a wider distance between those two points, so all things related are different. So this is a beat up 372X torque. This is a John Thread. I think it's pretty clear what the difference is. And that's really it right there. Top covers are different. John Thread Husqvarna. Which also means the filter cover is different. John Thread versus Husqvarna. Right? Quite a bit of differences. And they do not interchange. Okay? Because... The pull start from the John Thread likes to interface like that, and of course, the Husqvarna being completely different, these three pieces have got to stay together. So the tank casting, the handlebar, the chain brake handle, the top cover, filter cover, chain brake are not interchangeable between John Thread and the Husqvarna lines.
Yeah, you can put that on a, on a Husqvarna and it might look better. But you can tell it's a slightly different casting here too. So the cosmetics on the on this is different. Although the internals, well, that's the same. That's all interchangeable. So hopefully, hopefully, that gives you a overview of the differences between the John Shred 2166 2172 in the in the Husqvarna um, 365 and 372 X torques. Now, the second half of this video is I started going through trying to compile what tools am I going to use to take this saw down, pop seals out, put new bearings in, and then bring it back up. And, you know, when I do look at this, it's like, eh, it doesn't take a lot. You know, it happens pretty quick. But as I started laying things out on the table, I realized that, you know, there's actually quite a bit of stuff. And to start with, you got this 4 millimeter Allen, you know, Allen wrench here, T-handle. And the new Husqvarna's, oh my God, it's killing me. They're converting to a T27-like steel. So it's almost like uh, through osmosis, steel is bled into Husqvarna and vice versa. Some of the design features of Huskies, like the, uh, they call it the turbo feature, but basically spinning the air from the flywheel into the air box has gone to steel, and the antivibe springs have gone to steel. And Husqvarna, in return, has absorbed the T27 screws. How do you like that? So this is absolutely important. And because I'm old, this, along with a... See, I'm still getting stuff together. That helps. Screwdriver. You can use this to bar nuts to get the cover off. If you take the muffler off, you got the 5 millimeter to get it off the cylinder, although I'm not going to take the muffler off. Same with the carburetor on some of them, the Huskies, you got the smaller 3 millimeter. So in this job, these are going to be off to the side. To manipulate wires and hoses, peel the gasket off. When I put the ignition back on to set the gas, see how the piles begin to grow? Pop the flywheel off. Right? Pop the clutch off. Put the clutch back on and set the torque to 26 foot pounds. Split the cases. You know? Push out the bearings. To push out the bearings, you know, I set this on the other side of the cases and get them warm and drive them through with, with this driver right here, uh, which I turned down, by the way, so it works. To put them back in, see where I'm going with this? To pull the cases together, both sides, bushing for Husky both sides, to drive the seals in. This is for the flywheel side, this is for the PTO side. So this pile of junk, at a minimum, is what you got to have, you know, to do this efficiently. It's a lot of stuff there, isn't it? And that's, I guess, one of the reasons why shops forgot about that. Oh, and here's the handle to the tools to pull the, the crank through. And you can have to set the carburetor once you put it all back together. Commoner. 
And if you have other saws, you know, um, if you're a husky shop, you're going to have these instead of what I've got probably. This is for pretty much every Husqvarna you can buy. Seal drivers as well. Well, it's one of the reasons why shops charge what they do. You know, because uh, they buy tools. They buy tools to assemble and disassemble the saws in a fairly efficient manner. With this set of tools, it only takes a couple hours to go through that process. So I wanted to cover that. Tools required. Start unwinding that tangle. Oh yeah, I forgot this. Don't want to overheat things, you know, especially since I'm leaving parts of it together. I like my seal drivers better than the Husky Shop tools. That poor thing's getting beaten. <laughs> so, I guess without further ado, um, I'm going to get to business here. And I'm going to shut this section off. I'm not sure if I'm going to make this a video in of itself. Or am I going to put in a hyperspeed me disassembling and reassembling? Because, my God, I've done that enough times. I don't think it's worth another video. But, begin to quantify what's required. I think I've never really done that. So that's worth doing. Well, I think I'll do one more little tidbit. And that is before. Before. Did I say before? You split these cases. Dump the bar oil out. Otherwise, it ends up all over your bench. Note there is a washer. One thing I want to point out is the depth at which that seal is driven. I think that's pretty critical and it's also why I designed this tool the way it is is to get that same same depth down in there um, let me get real close to the camera if I can so it's actually driven in there pretty far you know I think that's uh, something that people should be cognizant of so anyway let me just keep going I'm going to start putting some of the tools back. And by the way, um, I had to add this tool to the ones used because I used this to pull the oil, uh, the oil tube out. Oh, yeah, compressed air. set of tools and that's to get the the pliers to get the uh, the wrist pin clip out Oh, one more tool at a dead blow hammer. God, 
I hate to waste brand new seals like that, but those seals are going to have to go. Oh, here's another tool. This you got to be really careful with because it's very easy to overreach and scratch up the wall of your of your case, you know. So you got to pretty much make sure that you're in the seal when you take this thing to take that seal out of there. Just like that. I didn't bring up the nope. That's good. But it's very easy to reach across and scratch up the case. And I don't know. I don't think I did on this one. Alright, let's get rid of these stupid bearings. Somewhere on the part shelf, a Husqvarna dealer is probably gonna have these. I would prefer these over the ones that came out. I've been using these, and I've had great luck with the Natchi brand. And it doesn't really matter whether or not they come with um, or without the, it's easy enough to pop the seals right out of there. So it doesn't really matter which ones you get. I've had excellent luck. This is a Husqvarna part number right here that has a steel cage, and it's Seven three eight two two zero two two five. I can't remember. I think those are for three forty sixes, possibly five seventy six flywheel side. These these are a ceramic hybrid, and they came from Definitive Dave, and that would be a significant upgrade in my belief, and I'm grateful that he he sent a pair out. Um. I'm not sure whether I'm going to put those in this saw because I'm not sure how much use this saw is going to get. You know, I kind of want to keep it pretty. So I might put this in, the, uh, in one of my hotter saws because I would rather have the better bearing that can handle the higher RPMs in a saw that actually needs them. Does that make any sense? So Definitive Dave, thank you very much for sending these. And these are the hybrid bearings. I believe they're an upgrade. You know, if you're going to actually warm a saw up and you're going to make it spin 14,000 RPMs, you might want to consider these, these ceramics, that uh, hybrids that the Definitive Dave sells. Just a thought. Okay. Got a call from my cardiologist looking for a pre-op time, which I don't know. I haven't decided if I'm going to talk about that on the channel or not, but you probably have noticed I don't walk around too well anymore. I need to get my main bearings replaced too, just like this chainsaw here. And uh... <laughs> I think before we do speed trials, we better get it going.
So we continue. I set the seal. I've got two seal drivers. And both of them sit over the crank. And I had done this one for the 390s, but it works for the 372s. And I put a, a little projection right there to push the seal about 15 thousandths past flush. And that's what I've been using this one. I used this a couple times, but I made... I used this one because I made a little bit tighter uh, fit to the crankshaft. This one here seems to do a better job, so I don't know. You got them both. And here's the seal driver for the flywheel side, so let's go ahead and put that seal in. But I kind of kludged together my new seal driver design, where basically it goes on like that. And I'm letting the the threaded rod guided, you know, so I make sure I got a nice even set. And since I didn't have it complete, I took this and kind of tapped it in with this chunk of pipe. I know that's kind of brutal, but it worked. And I've got that sorted out where it drives it to the right depth every time, you know. I like a little bit deeper than stock. I did some measuring and I kind of split the difference. There's a lot more meat there than you think. And, uh, but I wanted to build this to where I can have it come out the same way every time, you know? And I think I've about accomplished that.